What's up YouTube? Today we're learning the secret sauce of mixing your beats. Before we get to the video, please leave a like, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and join our great music community we're building here. And most importantly, follow my Instagram at Chicobeats with a Z because somebody else saw my name. And also follow me on Spotify, bro. It, it, I would really appreciate it. Follow me on Spotify. And if you have any questions like this, stick around to the end of the video because I might have already answered your question. Okay, so welcome to my first studio. I've loaded up a beat to demonstrate to you guys how to mix your beats. Uh, I get this question a lot and every time I get this question, I'm like, ah, I wish I could just explain to you guys. Mixing your beats especially is not uh, rocket science. Like it's, it's pretty simple, you know? Mixing your beats is like 99 or maybe 98% leveling the volumes and, and then there's maybe some little bit of those extra things. But the first thing is level your volume. So I'm just going to play uh, the beat for you guys, uh, the one that I have right now. And then um, these are all of the sounds. Uh, I just reset all of the volumes because I already, already finished this beat. And now I reset all of the volumes so it's unmixed now. But the, the main thing is that when I'm making beats I kind of already mix my beat when I'm making it because I already set all of the volume so when the beat is done it's actually mixed it's not that I make the beat and then I mix the beat it's 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 one process for me for recording vocals and all that stuff that's different because then you can really record the vocals and after that do the mix but for a beat most of the times it's already kind of mixed you know obviously when you make a full song you're gonna really mix the song but for as, for as far as the beat goes, I'll just let you listen. So this is the beat with all of the volumes reset to uh, zero, uh, to like the original position. Before we continue the video, I would love to thank our sponsor for today, which is Beatopia. Our friends from Beatopia have a cool Instagram account where they post tips and tricks to help emerging artists grow their rap or singing careers. I've partnered with Beatopia to give away a free beat lease to one of my beats. All you need to do is follow me and Beatopia on IG and click the link in the description of this video or my bio of my Instagram to download the free beat. Make sure you check out the description of this video to check out the full rules for this giveaway. Shout out Beatopia, let's go. The beat is fire bro okay so um so now i will go to the beat and and mix it again uh, as i would have mixed it while i was actually making the beat so uh, me i i'm not a guy that starts with the drums i really always start off with the melody so let's just loop this part of the beat here where i have every sound that's there uh inside of the beat so let's mute all of these uh, channels right here um so let's start with a melody let's play the melody Super fire. It's already quite loud enough. Uh, so with mixing your beat, just make sure that every uh, uh, sound that you have is routed to a mixer channel track. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, it's just press track here or uh, in the channel rack right here. Just make sure this is set to a certain number on the mixer. Uh, so our melody goes to channel number two. Um, so you can, here you can read how loud it is. You can see right now the melody is hitting around minus 12 dB, which is actually kind of like the target range for a for a melody. You like it might be still a little bit loud, so I'm just going to reduce the volume slightly. And and out of I don't know why it is the way it is, but from my experience, I've noticed that it's better to uh, mix your volumes with these buttons right here. Or, or this is actually the same so this button is the same as this button right here and not not do it in the mixer because I don't know it's like it's it, I don't know why but it, it sounds different so don't ask me but trust me do your volumes here and not here because the mixer I don't know this is this I like this, this a lot of control like it. second sound we have is a hi-hat uh, I'll put it in right here the main thing is with a hi-hat what I noticed with a lot of beginning producers is that they their hi-hat is way too loud because they like their hats like tss, tss, tss. but a hi-hat is already really high up and there's not a lot of other sounds 
going on in that frequency range so even if the volume isn't that loud it will still, still cut through your mix so don't worry about putting the hi-hat too loud just pay attention that it's not annoying when you when you turn up the volume of your beat make sure that the hi-hat isn't really hurting your ears so uh, i'll put on the hi-hat right now now i kind of feel like it's too loud but you really have to mixing is 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 the relationship of the sounds with each other so right now i really don't don't know if the hi-hat is too loud i need to hear it with all of the other sounds so i'm just going to leave it at that maybe reduce the volume a little bit uh, but this isn't its final 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 state that it will be at i think i'm just going to reduce it a little bit right now Next up is the uh, snare, I think. I oh, know, let me add the clap first. I think the clap is kind of okay. Uh, if you double click the clap or any sound, you will be able to check the velocity right here. Um, my tip is that if you want hard hitting sounds, uh, be sure to turn up the velocity to the maximum. Uh, here first because that's the velocity will determine how hard each sound is being hit so if for example with a kick or a snare or whatever it's sometimes better to first turn up the velocity and then turn down the volume after so the sound is still a hard hitting sound but it's just le less loud uh, sometimes it's better to have a low velocity and a, a higher volume you know it really depends but with this clap I felt like it was good as it was right here so I left it at this Let's add some other sounds. This counter snare, that's too loud. It's it's supposed to be like a little a little rhythm that you can hear in the background, but right now it, 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 it really my attention goes to that and I don't want that to be the case. So let's find it. Yeah, that's loud right here. Let's let's reduce it. I can also notice that I think it's panned a little bit. Let me check it out for to be sure. Uh, let's check the panning right here. Oh yeah, uh, let's check. Let's just take these to the middle right here and have these go left, right like this. It's kind of something you can do. Like that uh, even reduce the volume even more like with mixing beats it's like if you start to do the volume while you're making the beat you start to do it automatically and you know what you're going for so I can I can already tell you like mixing is also training your ear like you like you it, it is the way it is bro there's there's no magic ah uh, this is how to make your beat sound great it's training your ears as well so learn to listen to to other productions and to other beats and listen like oh okay the hi-hat is like this the snare is like this this is how the i don't know the bass relates to the kick right here or whatever like listen 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 because especially like with bass sometimes one of, one of your favorite tracks where you think it has a super loud bass the bass might not even be that loud it just might feel loud because the way it it, it comes in but sometimes it's better to put a bass more quiet and it will and you will be able to feel it more like it all depends so you, it's really important that you listen really listen to the sounds um, so let's add some more sounds uh, that's okay but yeah that's that right there the, the rim was too loud uh, let's find it here oh, yeah way too loud let's let's go back and uh, mix that Better. Crash is way too loud. Uh, where is it? is too loud better open hat 
can be a little bit less loud and it can also be a little bit shorter so I'm just going to turn on the out knob and make it shorter you, you hear it? the difference right here sometimes if you shorten the sounds a little bit it will it, it, it makes everything more tight and more um, I don't know it, it it's sometimes like every it's every sound is like it all fits together more instead of every sound has like this long tail it gets kind of like ah. I hope I can <laughs> express myself in the correct way <laughs> Uh, that roll right there may be a little bit loud too. Yeah. Okay, so before we get to the 808 and the kick, we want to make sure that there's a soft clipper on the master channel because if we're working with the way I'm going to use the kick and the 808 here, you will need the soft clipper on the master because if you don't have that there, it will kind of. Uh, it will, yeah, I don't know, it will not sound, sound too good because we're actually using a kick that's way, way, way too loud. If I show you guys the kick right here in the channel, you can see it already clips here. If you don't have a soft clipper on the master channel, it will totally ruin the sound of your beat. So um, let's start with the 808. It sounds like this, uh, how it sounds like right, right now. Note how the velocity is all maxed out with the 808. I always, always, always max out my velocity. I always do that because 808 needs to be hard hitting, in my opinion. It's just an opinion, it's subjective. But if you want to mix your beats like me, do this. This is actually what the 808 sounded like before I did anything to it. not really too good in the previous video uh, or in one of the previous videos we learned how to treat the bass so definitely press cut itself and then I'm going to shorten the 808 a little bit because it's too long the tail is too long as I just said fire but you can hear it's kind of weak so we want to boost it a little bit again too loud so let's reduce the volume but it, it stays the same hard hitting bass well this sounds good to me just make sure your 808 doesn't destroy everything else that's going on just make sure that it's it's there it can hit hard but just pay attention to how everything relates to each other because Sometimes you can really ruin a beat if the 808 is way too loud, you know, like. And then there's the kick. Uh, the kick, the velocity is maxed out. Uh, this is, it's it's like, it's funny because I know the kick is way too loud, but it's just the way it is. With the soft clipper on it, it, it catches it, and, and it's just the effect that I'm going for here. So maybe I'll reduce the volume a little bit, but it will be a hard knocking kick. Something like that seems fire. I think that's fire. One tip I can give you guys: if you when you're mixing, uh, maybe try to sometimes close your eyes while you're changing something because it's really important that you just listen. And if you're looking at the screen, you're also looking with your eyes, and you just gotta listen. You know, it's it's really important to be able to separate the visual from the auditory. You know, so it's 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 sometimes really good to just close your eyes when you're mixing so you can just focus on what's going on so hey that's about everything i uh, i do to mix a beat you know obviously with making melodies and all that stuff you can add some reverb or you can for example this melody i might put it a little bit wider like this so the melody is spread out and and the bass and the other stuff is in the middle but apart from that you know it's all personal preference if you want to maybe pen some of your hi-hats right left or or create some or add some reverb on the snare or whatever that's all mixing but it all it's all personal preference so just listen to the I don't know listen to some references that you got going on and then try to 
try to try to bring that over to your current production that you're working on. So hey, um, let's listen to the end result. But before that, let's answer some questions. Uh, yo, do you got any tips on transitions? Uh, well, I would just say um, uh, how, how I create my favorite transitions sometimes is just like play a piano note, then reverse that. And then put some reverb on it, so so you so you get like a, and then there's some reverb going on, and then tune the note to the to to where it fits with the beat that you're working on, because not every note fits with every beat, you know. But that's some that's some a quick way to create a cool transition sound. Somebody asked, how do I find the right BPM of a song I want to make from scratch? Uh, uh, there's not there's not really like. I don't really know what you mean because you you can start with any BPM, but if you wanna uh, if you got a BPM in your head and you wanna just tap it, you can use a BPM tapper. Just uh, search on Google for BPM tapper or in FL Studio, right click the tempo you currently have selected and press tap, and then you can tap in and it will automatically uh, uh, detect the BPM you're tapping. So that way you can set your BPM tapping. Somebody asked, can you use any piano like a MIDI controller? Uh, no, because not every piano has a MIDI output. And uh, MIDI is a certain type of processing, a certain type of information that gets sent to your DAW that can read it as a MIDI information. Not every keyboard or whatever has the ability to, to, to output what is being pressed on the keys as MIDI information. So no, keep that in your mind when buying a keyboard, make sure it's a MIDI keyboard if you want to use it in your software. Somebody asked, have you tried Audacity for making songs? Uh, if not, try it once. Uh, back in the days when I was 12 years old or something, I had a band and we used to record our stuff into Audacity. I think that was actually my first uh, DAW that I ever used, but it would be funny to try and make a beat in Audacity, bro. That's that's true. Not really a producing question, but what kind of producing setup should I start off with? Well, bro, you should just watch my previous video on the equipment that you need to start making beats, bro. Hey, okay, so I remixed the beat from scratch. Uh, I'll let you guys follow along. I hope you guys uh, learned something. Let's listen to the end result. Uh, before we end the video, definitely remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and follow my Spotify, bro. Follow it. I've got a big surprise coming soon. Follow my Spotify. And if you want to, of course, follow my Instagram at ChickyViewsWizzy, because somebody else saw my name. Let's listen to what we got.